cannot be stopped by any army or government. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the idea is liberty and the time is now. Our greatest advantage is that we are driven by ideas and determined to win on principle. That determination and commitment is inspired by none other than the one and only Dr. Ron Paul. Are you all excited? Thank you for coming, everybody. Yeah. And, uh, I, have to, I have to thank that, uh, that guy that runs this show, that Cliff guy. Boy, he is just great. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I want to uh, tell you that this sort of reminds me of the first time I went to a young people's group. I was just recently elected to Congress in 1976 and I wanted to spread the message and I was ready to go. So I had occasionally get an invitation to go to a college campus and I would go. There were always six or seven people there. And, and yet uh, today it's a little bit different. There's so much more enthusiasm. There is a tremendous interest right now in dealing with the issues. As was mentioned in the introduction by Pooja, the ideas are key to it, and that is why YAL has a great future because it's participating in spreading these ideas of liberty with young people because you can, you can, you're inheriting a mess. It's a real mess. I'm going to tell you about that. But the delightful thing about it is the answers can be found in liberty, not more government. <laughs> On the long term, I'm optimistic. On the short term, which is like uh, yesterday uh, when they're dealing with the medical care reform, I'm pessimistic about short-term solutions because there's not enough people in Washington that uh, are in a position to actually change things on the short term. But the long term, there's lots of reason to be excited about what's happening because there was a time when the libertarian message was just barely alive. The message of freedom has been alive, uh, alive for a long, long time, as long as recorded history has existed. There's always been this hint of the importance of the individual. But really, the uh, issue of liberty came about uh, probably with the Industrial Revolution. The individual was important, property was important, and just think of the tremendous benefits in the last 300 years. And yet, uh, we still ended up with the consequences of uh, a lot of problems. Just look at the 20th century. I mean, it was horrible when you think of hundreds of millions of people human beings killing each other in all kinds of wars because they never learned the full extent of what liberty is all about. Liberty means that you have some energy and incentives and you can work and you can advance you know, the uh, standard of living for people. But really, liberty has to be involved in bringing people together. And that is not called what we, he what we hear today about the campuses trying to jam down the, the throats of everybody, this multiculturalism that has nothing to do with liberty. True liberty brings people together, and that's what we should seek. Think about if, uh, I don't know the age of the crowd, but I'm assuming that there's a lot of people here in college, and if you're a senior in college, you're around 18 years of age. Just think uh, the, of the conditions of your 18 years. Probably 15 of them, our country's been very much involved in foreign wars, foreign entanglements, and, and they continue. They're not getting any less. And uh, that is what you have, in your whole lifetime, essentially, you've put up with this. The, actually, our country has been at war since 1990, you know, with the Persian Gulf War. Then there was a slight break 
but we continued to do the bombing and then t after 2001 there was more declaration they announced you know a uh, authority for the use of military force in 2001 they're still using that thing for the as a permanent declaration of war it was designed to go after some very bad people who did harm to us but they still use that and it's blanket it's universal it's worldwide so we're we're at, not at world in a world war as world war one and two uh was were they but we're in a war uh a worldwide war because uh wherever there's a bad person and uh, we have to send out the troops send out the bombs send, send out the drones have killed us and all these things and never do our leaders stop and think well maybe that's part of the problem maybe we're killing too many innocent people over years maybe we are generating people who come to resent us and you know what it just may be that what we're facing you're facing is a foreign policy that gives us blowback and that we as a people must assume and that will be your generation assume a responsibility that what we do may well have consequences and once again we ought to listen to the founders of this country who suggested defending the country is one thing but don't get involved in entangling alliance around the world and don't become aggressors don't invade other countries stay out of the affairs of europe i would say that was pretty good advice and i would say it's about time we took the advice of the founders <laughs> and always it's you know this idea that uh, uh, we're defending ourselves we we have uh, people we have uh, a bigger army military spending than the next 10 countries put together and we're always under threat we have to be prepared for war against China be prepared against war against Russia all Middle East and uh, it continues on and on that we have to have more military spending so even when we have a new administration designed mostly to bring about changes, what one of the most most significant changes, we need more ammunition, we need more bombs, we need more airplanes, we need a bigger navy, and we need to stand firm and confront these kind of countries around the world without asking the question, well, who's going to profit from that? You know who profits from it? Not you, not the taxpayer. The military industrial complex is the one that's behind so much of this, and we have to realize that. So we generally, our government and our, uh, has been at, at war in many different ways. There's a, another war. I think there's a war going on against American liberties. Uh, our, when, when you think of what's happened in the last 15 years in your lifetime, uh, We've had the Patriot Act. Just think of what they've done under the Patriot Act. All this nonsense of all this recording. Everybody knows everything. Everybody spies on everything. The only thing that might be good that comes out of all this spying, who said this and who said that, who spied on it. They're spying on each other. You know, <laughs> the FBI spies on the CIA and the Republicans spy on the Democrats and we spy on our allies. And uh, maybe they will finally realize that uh, it's not worth the time of day to do all this spying, uh, but it continues. But it's a war, really. The result is it's a war against our personal liberties. And uh, that is, we, we have this, we have it upside down. Privacy is something that is very clearly stated in the Constitution, the Fourth, Fourth Amendment. It's supposed to protect our privacy and protect our property. And, uh, and, and yet the government, the government wants all the secrecy and we have no privacy. They're supposed to protect our privacy, but the secrecy is now, if you happen to be in a position, and maybe somebody will be in this room, be in a position, that you know what the government's doing. And then every once in a while we have a few pop up and they become whistleblowers. Under the law, whistleblowers should be protected and they would re reveal. And there's one that I think that we should, uh, that deserves admiration, and that's Edward Snowden. <laughs> is considered uh, a committing treason. He can't come back to the country, you know, because of, of this. But the people in government, uh, you know, they lie and get away with it. 
I think this story, and I've mentioned this so many times about uh, the book The Law by Bastia. It's a simple, basic principle. If you haven't read it, you need to read Bastian's The Law. And it's very simple because most people, even the non-libertarians, accept the basic principle that, you know, and this is fortunate that we, they have half, half of the message. That they might, they might, there'll be a bunch always breaking the law, but most people in this country still say, well, you're not supposed to steal from your neighbor. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're not supposed to go into your neighbor's garage and take what you want. And you're not supposed to lie. You know, you're not supposed to kill people. And the basic um, rules are there. And, and yet, uh, when, when it comes to the government, they do it all the time. They're lying to us all the time. Why is it the most severe crime you commit? Some people commit crimes, they can't get convicted, but they did tell a fib to the FBI and they throw them in prison for 30 years because they lied to the government, which I'm not justifying lying. But uh, what I'm saying is, why is it that uh, governments lie to us and they seem to get away with it? They lie us in the war. All this stuff that's going on is based on lies. And uh, all the way back, it isn't just these recent years. I mean, you can go back to uh, the uh, Spanish-American War and things going on, Civil War, all these things. So often the, God, the, the government just lies to us and they get away with it. So I would say that it's time that, yes, we should follow this principle because that is a libertarian principle. Don't lie, cheat, or steal. And don't meddle with other people's business. But the greatest advancement for civilization will be is when the government is forced to live under those same laws of prohibitions of using force against us. There will be some basic changes, basic changes in understanding that that means your life is your own. You own your life. And if you do, if that is what liberty means about Shouldn't you own the fruits of your labor? Why, why is it that they assume that uh, right now the assumption is that uh, anything you produce belongs to the government? And you get to keep what the government tells you you're allowed to keep under what conditions and what you, how you're going to spend it and, and, and whatnot. So, uh, no, it should be, and if that is the case, there should be no theft by government. That is, I think, it, for, for the most part, government taxation for the redistribution of wealth and fighting these illegal wars, that is theft. It shouldn't be permitted. <laughs> principle that I think is so important and that is uh, generally speaking it is recognized that uh, in the issue of freedom of speech which is under threat any, even today but it, that you can um, you can speak out on the issues you can uh, practice your religion as, as you as you believe and that uh, you can have spiritual beliefs you can have intellectual beliefs uh, sometimes I don't know if the universities right now understand this very well because they seem to be undermining it but where they have erred where the authorities have erred in the educational system in our government is erred is by saying yes your intellect is your own. You can read the books you want, and we won't hopefully go back to book burning, and you can go to church or not go to church. But when it comes to putting stuff in your body, that's when the government has to come and take care of you because you might want to go out and look at uh, health products that aren't approved by the FDA and the drug companies, and that would be a vicious crime. So I would say you should treat, the people should have this right to put into their minds what they want, put into their spiritual life what they want, and whatever you want to put in your body, you do it at your own risk. Yeah. And, and, when you, and when you think of it, you know, uh, the, the liberty to read what you want and, uh, and and, and have a spiritual life, that could be very risky. There's been a lot of bizarre things go on, on under that freedom. Uh, and, and it gets sorted out in a different way. But if this is carried out uh, to the extreme because the assumption is that you don't know what is best for you. And that's why the government's going to tell you how to eat and what to eat. And, and they, uh, they just are 
too much in trouble, guess what? The special interests get involved. And the special interests get involved, and uh, then uh, the drug companies, and one of the reasons, of course, for the drug war is because the drug companies don't want any competition. <laughs> and, you know, there may be some competition with what people might uh, uh, work, work out. But uh, during the, whether it's the wars overseas uh, and the taxation for that or the wars against our liberties at home, it's always at the sacrifice of individual liberties. And the assumption is made that the government owns us. The worst thing, and it's still on the books, they won't erase it from the books, and that is, if necessary, we're going to have a draft. Still, still 18 year olds going and registering to, to rubber stamp the principle that the government owns me and any time they call me up. I went through it and I got drafted in the 60s and, and that meant they owned my life and they could drag me out of my medical training and fight an undeclared war. Yeah. You know, fight a war and that was during the 60s. An undeclared war which is an absolute disaster. 60,000 Americans died. Millions of Vietnamese died between the Americans and what the, uh, the French did. And uh, the war was never declared, and, uh, and Congress just rolled over, you know, rolled over and, and voted all the money. And how did it get stopped finally? Well, the 60s were very interesting and very violent, too, because the, finally the people rebelled, and they said, no more wars, and we're coming home. And we're coming home.